So what brought you to the Herb? Well, I started, uh, there, there are, there's an apocryphal story that, that I asked my parents for a blues harp, a harmonica, and they misunderstood me and gave me a harp instead. <laughs> that is vaguely true. It was really obvious that I loved music when I was a kid, but I hated lessons. But my parents didn't figure that out. They thought, oh, well, I guess she doesn't like piano lessons, so we'll give her guitar lessons. Oh, gee, I guess she doesn't like guitar lessons, we'll give her harp lessons. I mean, they went through, like, all these instruments and finally thought, she's got to like harp lessons. And finally they figured out, she doesn't like lessons. But by then, I'd had a little, an introduction to all the instruments. And when I got to college, and my college needed a harpist, I had actually touched a harp. So I was the most highly trained person on the harp at that point, which meant that I became the harpist. So it was, it was kind of by coincidence. So those lessons actually gave you the foundation you used. That's right. And w when I was in college, I took classical lessons. I tried to be a nice classical harpist. I played in orchestras. But my whole being is one of two things. First of all, is improvising. I do not like to play what is written particularly. And also, I really resented parts that said, pass it, 450 measures, meaning don't play for 450 measures. As far as I was concerned, if I was going to be on a stage, I was supposed to be the star of the stage. And, you know, and I always have my own ideas about what the music should sound like, so I finally just really gravitated for, towards the one art form that, that encompasses all of that, which is jazz, which allows me to improvise, and also allows me to change itself. That's, I'll talk a little more about that, because I find that interesting. And then also to be a leader myself, or to play solo. One of the beautiful things about jazz is, first of all, after touring so much in Europe, I realized that it is, it is one of the few fundamentally American art forms. We didn't get it from um, white European ancestors. It is a, p a part of the American experience. Um, crummy though that is as far as slavery goes, jazz came over with, with the slaves from Africa. The fundamental concepts of it did. And it is built to, to encompass change. And so it's really a beautiful form because it's also built to encompass and to embrace various cultures and so once you understand the concepts of it you whatever you learn or hear or learn more of it gets to come into the art form itself so it is a truly living art form i mean obviously classical music is is, is alive because the players are alive and they're still inventing the um, interpretation but jazz is alive in the sense that it is constantly recreating itself yeah, right in the moment. That's right. And that's what's so, inc I think that's what's incredible to the audience, is because they realize, whether they realize it immediately consciously or not, they know that they are having an effect on what they're hearing. It is as unlike television as possible.